Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to Deflating and Escaping Atheism. I'm Max Colby, and with me as usual is Rob from Deflating Atheism. Say hello, Rob. Hey. What's been going on new at your channel? I really liked your summer banger. Uh, oh. A lot, a lot, <laughs> lot. Maybe I'm just weird. Did, did, did you get much good feedback on that? Yeah, well, I, I, was, a, I was a little disappointed with the with, with the views, but yeah, it, it may just be too uh, too weird. <laughs> tell you what, if you're kind of a nerd like me into into weird music, and I don't even know what you call that sort of thing now. He did a he did a great sound collage uh, imitating a psychotic atheist. You should really like it. <laughs> they didn't know where the sun what came out went at night. They I, I actually have. <laughs> I actually have art music precedents for that, but uh, uh, I actually, when I finished that, I sent it to a friend of mine who was actually the guy holding the camera, and, and I told him superstition. <laughs> I, I told him, uh, I think I may have actually succeeded in creating uh, something one of a kind. You know, I think I think if you actually go through all the atheists and all the Christian videos on YouTube, you're, you're not going to find anything quite like that. So, so I, I have I can say that much for it. You know. So everybody, please go over to the Deflating Atheism channel if you haven't yet and, and subscribe to it. Uh, support him on Patreon. Um, he's also got some new videos up I haven't watched yet. Um, also, I've been promising for more than a month now, but the Salviander interview is already done. Uh, Patreon uh, patrons already have it as an exclusive, and I'm going to try and release it in three parts for everybody else this week. So look forward to that. Some nerds out there are going to be really angry, especially some nerd girls I know, because... It's an interview with an Aspie uh, atheist who grew up in Canada and finally found God when she was almost 30. Um, and she found it while studying science. So there. So that's what we got coming up. Uh, today we are going to be taking apart uh, a video. Well, don't you want to uh, tell us about your experience? Which, oh, oh, yeah, I could bring that, yeah. Okay, I'm going to explain something else that we do. Uh, there is a long and honored tradition at this point on the inter internet called shitposting. And, you know, the Escaping Atheism Project, what we do on Twitter and other social media is we should shitpost. We try and stay well within the rules of any system we're on. We try not to harass individuals. In fact, we tend not to bother anybody who doesn't actually come to us first, unless they're a celebrity in the news or something. Um, and we make fun of people and we make jokes and we do it all the time and we're very clear that we're doing it. It even says it's what we do. Um, nevertheless, atheists tend to run around and censor people. Um, uh, and uh, uh, we got our first suspension notice, which is pretty good because we run a, you know, they don't like, a, they don't like Christians um, in social media. They don't like Christians on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, they tend to be heavily atheist zone. So atheists get away with things that no Christian can get away with. We see a little of that here. I got my first suspension. We got our first suspension. The team did for a tweet. Now this was right in the middle of a, of a storm of, of, of atheists talking about, uh, you know, deprogramming people. And maybe I had even just seen something from an atheist talking about um, how killing Christians might be, uh, you know, might make more sense than living with them. So I put up a joke poll, a free thinker question. Should atheists be allowed to breed or should we work to cull them from the population? Oh my God, the atheist butthurt was so heavy. I mean, it just got hundreds of retweets, I think, um, and tons of votes. And by the way, most of, mo I have to say, I was very pleased with our audience. Most of you agreed we should keep a few atheists alive. <laughs> I, I saw that before it was over. Um, you know, unfortunately, they had it taken down. They suspended the account for 12 hours. So we're going to have to do a little less comedy for the atheists because they don't have a very good sense of humor. It's very sad when you're an atheist. Uh, we do have a new poll up, though, and you are, you know, invited to vote in that poll. Um, yesterday, we ran a poll to poke fun at atheists, and they were so butthurt they got us suspended. That's because choose. A, the poll was mean. B, you were out of line, as in us, or C, Hitler with an was an atheist. And so far, Hitler was an atheist, is leading in our very scientific poll. So <laughs> apparently we were censored because Hitler was an atheist. Well, he invented the atheist religion. That's 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 what I was told. It was in Mein Kampf. Um, let's see, Richard Dawkins is an acolyte. 
No, we're kidding. But seriously, butthurt atheists will say the most nasty thing. I mean, somebody sent me uh, pictures of Jesus giving blowjobs and getting anally raped. Um, that's okay. Yeah. But I say something mildly to tweak atheists on an account, by the way, that's uh, very clearly marked as humor. In fact, if anybody doubts that part, um, uh, you could just see our screen wall. For two years now, it's made it clear that what we do is humor and satire, and we make fun of atheists. Now, how do I turn this stupid? This is kind of your this is kind of your own art video right now. Yeah, it was. They <laughs> know where the sun went at night. Bronze Age superstition. <laughs> Bronze Age fairy tale. All right, now I'm but, just being. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that, that that is going to be the song of the summer. So so when when July rolls around, you will hear that uh, bumping from every uh, passing car. So uh, we 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 expect it to pass Gangnam Style at some. Yes, time. yes. <laughs> really, really a while, but okay. So we're gonna look but, at it from huh? No, I, I just want to say the the irony of that of of a free thinker post. You know, you should be able to just spitball any ideas, to just toss it out there for consideration. But no, as as it turns out, you really can't. No, well, maybe I'll do it's another one. A free thinker uh, when you're coloring within their lines. Free thinkers always seem to think that the free thinking is abolishing religion. They never yeah. think that the free thinking is the concept of, well, let's maybe uh, eat, eat <laughs> atheists. I mean, would it benefit society if we made it legal to eat, you know, stalk them and eat them? Yeah, yeah, and, and a, a modest proposal. Does your yeah, a modest proposal exactly? And does your atheist taste better with barbecue sauce or with dry <laughs> rub? <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, on, on the on the more uh, uh, kind of a banal level, I mean, the irony is that free thinking is defined by a set of conclusions you must not, under any circumstance, arrive at. If That's you right. if you if you free think and arrive at the conclusion that God exists, no, that that's not permissible. Yeah, in fact, we're going to be looking at a video now from a young man named, I, I think it's Heath. It's spelled H-I-I-T-H, so I don't think it's Heath. I think it's Heath. It's a funny spelling of Heath. I'm just going to call him Heath. Um, I haven't watched enough of his videos, but I've watched a couple, and I've watched this one. And I'm going to give a little pre-boot explanation of what I think it is, because I'm noticing a trend of teenagers and really maybe young 20-somethings uh, putting up videos, telling their story of how they, quote-unquote, deconverted to atheism and they're all young people and uh i'm not sure how old heath is here maybe you'll i'm not good at that rob maybe you'll, you'll have guess his age better but i'm guessing high school early college something yeah. like that um and he starts by telling his deconversion story now already you know and i'm gonna alert heath himself to this already you know he's been caught up in the atheist cult movement He's not just somebody who questions his beliefs or has decided he doesn't believe anymore. He's been programmed and indoctrinated because he already accepts the notion that um, becoming atheist is deconverting, which is one of many cult phrases that you will learn when you join those atheist groups that are all uh, uh, in a lot of colleges and now in a lot of public high schools. Public high schools where Christians are often shunned uh, from having their groups or their prayer groups. Some can, but some get shunned and harassed i know a lot yes. have but atheist groups because they're not religious get special treatment so they're allowed to go in there and proselytize their atheist beliefs and i'm before we start we're not going to be mean to you heath but son you have been proselytized to and reading cult literature telling you things that aren't true um you can we can tell just by the terminology you use and just by the standardized arguments you used along with all your other co-cultists, because you are caught in a cult right now. Especially if you are reading people like, oh, I don't know, Jerry Coyne, Lawrence Krauss, uh, any of the big old names like Richard Dawkins. These people are all frauds, by the way. Yeah. Like Sam Harris, same way. Um, Michael Shermer, a big fraud. Steven Pinker, huge fraud. Um, uh, you are getting into a cult movement, Heath. And so if you are always worried about various cults capturing you to make you believe in God, remember, sir, that, son, that there are, are cults that will make you not believe in God. This, this cheap, sleazy atheist movement you're part of is, is um, Marxism is a creepy atheist cult. Objectivism is a creepy atheist cult. And there are other atheist cults. In fact, look into a guy named Jim Jones. Um, yeah. Poisoned a bunch of people in Guyana with poisoned Kool-Aid with cyanide. He's the one that story comes from. And yeah, he was a Christian who converted to an atheist 
and hated God and talked about sky fairies and imaginary friend before he killed all those people. So well, you Scientology have other, again, which what Scientology there, there is Scientology no, is another atheist. God, it, it, it teaches, it teaches that all religions are delusions that were implanted uh, in the human race. It, it, so it's kind of, it's almost kind of retelling of the kind of atheist Gnosticism a, a myth. Yes. Right. So, and we're going to, there's going to be some specifically Christian content here. I'm going to address for him too, specifically Catholic content. So uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and play it. And then we're going to deconstruct and analyze them a little bit. So here we go, switching screens and okay, here we go. Make sure, let me know if this sounds okay, Rob. When I became an atheist, it was a gradual process as any major change in the way you think or your way of life should be. But to start, I was religious from a relatively young age. I was initially raised Catholic, but eventually I figured that following what the Bible says would be more reasonable. So after I figured that, for about three or four years, I spent as much time as I could reading the Bible and believing what I read, starting in the New Testament. But eventually, I started to have my doubts. And initially, these doubts were really small, like, what if there is no God and I'm just wasting my time? All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop him here. Um, uh, he's well-spoken, and he's making some good points. Um, I'm going to point out something here that's important. And uh, this is something we, I, you know, Rob, you, you can distance yourself from, from this or not, but the, the whole Escaping Atheism crew agrees. We're we, we really prayed on it and thought, and we are starting to just go ahead and accept that we're going to have to go ahead and distance ourselves from evangelical Christianity. I came out of evangelical Christian and I don't like it. And I'm glad I got out. Um, in fact, poor evangelicals helped me make, make me more atheist. And the reason I mention this is that I, I, I heard him just say what I think causes so many people to become atheist. He's going to ignore what the church teaches and what the trained people there who've got years of experience on the thousands of years in scholarship on yeah. the Bible, and you're going to read it for yourself. And my immediate question is, what evangelical Christian or atheist told you that was the best plan? Because I tried that plan, and I will tell you something. I find the Bible incredibly boring to read. I find many of the stories make no damn sense at all. Um, some of it's very wooden. Some of it's pretty. Some of it's, you know, poetic and, and, and all that. But basically, it's a dumb, incoherent book. Wow. If, I, yeah, I am going to distance. Uh, wait, wait uh, I'm not done yet. If you don't already think the idea of a god is rational, logical, and believable. Because if you don't think God can exist, if you don't think miracles can exist, then that Bible is truly useless. I mean, really, it's not very interesting to read, maybe for what, intellectual purposes to see what these old people thought. If you just assume no God and no miracles, okay, assume those. Great, it's a dumb book. Throw it away, please. My point to you would be that if you that, that, that to do that, however, you have to a assume there's no God and no miracles, that those don't occur, and b that you are smart enough and learned enough to understand the full theological background of the Bible. Yeah, what I, yeah. What I find happens with a lot of evangelicals is they'll have this they have this this doctrine. It, it is an evangelical doctrine that the gospel is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if you just read those and believe them, you will be saved. Already that's heresy to most Christians, including a lot of mainline Protestants, by the way. Um, certainly to Catholics, also to Eastern Orthodox, Anglicans, Oriental Orthodox, Coptics. It's heresy to most Christians to think you can just whip that out and it'll all explain itself and you'll be saved as long as you believe it. That is not what most Christians believe. Evangelicals can speak for themselves. I think Baptists will hate what I just said, but it's what I think. Um, so the bottom line, though, is your approach is already wrong thinking. I'm going to go off in the weeds and read this complex book myself. That was a lot, Rob. Did you have anything you want to say? Yeah, well, no, I, I mean, I, I certainly agree that you cannot take a, a book from a first century uh, Judea and read it in, 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 in 21st century America and, and expect that it will just completely open itself up. 
I, I mean, everything from from the the idioms they use to just what was common knowledge at the time. Uh, well, yeah, it, it just I mean, it, it involves scholarship, and so and so that is not uh, in the text itself. Yeah, in fact, I'll give you a, a, a real quick clue of just one tiny example, and there are thousands of other examples, but just in terms of terminology alone, uh, most people don't know this, but it was ancient. It wasn't even slang exactly. It was just an accepted way to say, if you wanted to say a lot, you would, you, you would say seven, because seven meant a lot. Mm. And they would mm. use that interchangeably. Sometimes it meant specifically seven, and sometimes it just meant a lot. We have other words like that in English, for example, look up the word several, which is related. And I'm, and, and then, then, uh, quite. I'm getting, I'm getting an etymology lesson here. So yes. Well, yeah. And, 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 and they didn't have decimal notation, by the way, they didn't have <laughs> numbering. Yeah. Well, it says, it says pi is equal to three and that, that would be, that would be, uh, uh that would certainly be a, a, a mark against the Bible. If the ancient Hebrews had decimal places or fractions, yes. That's right. And another one is that they would and, all and, By the way, I, I just want to say, even if we extend it to uh, to 10 decimal places, it's still only an approximation. So in an objective sense, three isn't really a whole lot worse than, than if you extended it to 10 decimal places. Right. If the Bible suggests pi is three, that's because they didn't even have decimals. And that was their closest guess. And you don't... Yeah. You know the carpenters or whatever using it were like, okay, it's three and a and a hair because they didn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it took years before we got. We didn't have. They didn't have Arabic numerals. And also on the seven thing, seven seven tended to mean a lot. Just mean oh, you got a bunch of those. You got seven of those. Um. Um. And the thousand, a thousand. They didn't know what one zero 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 was. They didn't know what a thousand was that way. Uh, a thousand to them was really meant more like a million jillion. So saying 7,000 in the Bible w w could easily be translated as, you know, a kajillion bazillion. In, in other words, an unbelievably long amount of time. It, it, so when you read that the, you know, things that suggest the earth is six or 7,000 years or whatever, or this will happen in a thousand years, it, you know, it was used very loosely. It wasn't a numeric quantity. They didn't even know what 1000 was. They did know where the sun went at night, but they did not know where the sun went at night. Thanks for the callback, yes. Yeah. Um, Bronze Age goat herders. I'm sorry. I, I, um, one, one of the things you might notice, Heath, and your audience might notice if you ever point this out, is that we are mocking common phrases atheists use that are silly and easily debunked. Yes, yes. So here's what I would challenge you to do, Heath. Go back to a Catholic church, let them know you were born Catholic, all that, and sit down and talk to any Catholic priest and say, I'm an atheist. Um, any well-trained uh, Catholic priest will cure you of your atheism within an hour or less, and not with <laughs> anything, but with logic and evidence. So yeah. go ahead and try that. There, uh, I do, uh, our priests are really well trained. Don't even have to become Catholic. Just tell them I'm an atheist. Convince me I shouldn't be. He'll probably do it if you're an open-minded person. And by the way, you seem like you are. By the way, by the way, uh, uh, I, I said this to Max in, in, a, in a private Facebook message, but I think I think it bears repeating. It is even in the uh, in the Roman Catholic Catechism that God is a timeless, transcendent. Does it say necessarily existing? I don't know if it says that. But, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it had, they had a word for existing, but yeah. Yeah, so uh, a, a timeless, transcendent, self-existent entity. So there is no excuse for a professed ex-Catholic to be a banding about uh, invisible sky fairy memes. Yeah, I because that just shows but, you never understood Catholic doctrine in the first place, if, if you think God was ever supposed to be an invisible sky fairy. You know what, I better, I better back up. Uh, he's probably getting mad now. I don't think he used that phrase, and I apologize. I just well, I, I haven't watched the video. I haven't watched the video. Yeah, yeah, I know, and I just realized I was making the Invisible Sky Fairy jokes because I liked your song, but and I was just being funny, but I, he doesn't indulge in that that I noticed. Um, but I will check, call out to Heath, notice how often your friends do that, Invisible Sky Fairy, Bronze Age, Goat Herder, yeah. Mary Friend, uh, Wizard, Scott, uh, whatever. Let's go on and let's hear more of Heath's he story. Which I easily brushed off because I thought, of course, God exists, of course. But eventually I had more 
in more serious doubts. There were a few issues that made me seriously consider the legitimacy of religion. I can't remember them all at the moment, but one of the points was why I believe in God. And I didn't really have a good answer to that. I was just taught that God, heaven, and hell existed from a young age. And then oh. I started to think Let's have, again, let's, let's another second. about why everyone else became religious. Okay. Now, you can already see where this is leading. Um, yes. And I'm not convinced, Heath, that you had all these thoughts on your own. Uh, not that you use most of the most egregious phrases that the cult you're joining uh, uses, but you've already given up, you know, just by saying you're, you're deconverting. Um, we already know you're reading more than you're saying, and that you've probably got friends who are teaching you things, in other words, are proselytizing to you and indoctrinating you in atheist wisdom. Yeah. A lot of atheist books with identifiable atheist talking points. And they'll even talk to you, by the way, about learning skepticism. Number one thing to remember, son, you can be skeptical of them and should be. Yes. Yes. Um, so what else did you go ahead, Rob? I got to let you talk for a while. I'm totally done. Well, obviously, uh, Heath here is, is literally a, an adolescent. But I, I always make the point that atheism, uh, you know, atheism as it is commonly understood these days, is uh, essentially a, a very adolescent movement because they take their own experiences and project them uh, onto everyone. So their experiences must be the experience of everyone. Their knowledge, the limits of their knowledge must be the limits of everyone's knowledge. That's just kind of the way like adolescents think. And uh, so if, if a person it was brought up in a religion and then they start thinking themselves thinking for themselves and questioning and then they abandon their religion, that just becomes the, the narrative of all belief. So yeah. if people think for themselves, they abandon religion, that just becomes the experience of everyone. So if, if a person has a religion, then they haven't thought for themselves. Yes. And so that is that is kind of the adolescent atheist thinking. But nowadays, with again, with the kind of a self-congratulatory bubble of new atheism, people can protract their, their adolescence well into adulthood, where they have people just basically, as you said before, just basically reassuring each other of these things. So they'll never actually critically investigate these, these kind of uh, notions they have. Yep. He I also, I'm sorry, I also want to say uh, something I kind of wanted to make more of a point of in the Professor Stick video is that they throw around the term religion very loosely and they make these very broad claims about religion. Uh, what actually religion is, is, is pretty tricky to uh, nail down. I, I mean, religion is, is kind of a vague category, so it, it's very difficult to make any sort of sweeping claim about religion. Yep, watch out for that dicey uh, use of uh, the word religion, because what ideological atheists like to do is to assert that religion is something irrational and not based on evidence. Um, yeah. That this is false because there is ample evidence for God. There is ample evidence for a soul. There's evidence for an afterlife. It is ample and substantial. And by the way, if your atheist cult friends are telling you, no, there is no such evidence, your cultist friends are lying to you. Please get skeptical <laughs> of them. There and is and you, you can't conflate the issue of the existence of a soul or the existence of God with just the truth of religion, which isn't even a, yeah. You know, yeah, and, and just notice that there are atheist religions. Once you really see this, and you will see this, yes. notice that there are atheist religions. The easiest one to spot is the objectivists because they are just so crazy. Ayn Rand fans, go read The Fountainhead, which isn't too bad, or worse, Atlas Shrugged. That is a psychotic atheist Bible for a psychotic atheist religion that nobody wants to live except weird atheists. Um, similarly, Marxism, you're pro by the way, most of your atheist friends who are teaching you this are probably Marxists. Um, they'll get angry and deny it, but go read the Communist Manifesto and read about the history. A lot of your friends as atheists are going to be communists, at least the ones indoctrinating you. <laughs> um, did we skip any of his points while we were rambling at him? Uh, no, I don't think we missed much. All right, let's get him a little more time then. And it was pretty much the same thing though I saw that people also became religious because they had 
some sort of emotional experience at church or something along those lines. Those were the only two reasons that I could come up with. I'm going to stop him right there. Um, uh, he, you just suggested uh, that um, some kind of emotional experience um, may have led them to believe there was a God. Um, that was a huge leap in assumption and assertion you just made that you need to climb down from. People who have deep spiritual experiences um, have every reason to believe those are real. And yeah. so do we. Okay. I'm not here to tell you about my deep spiritual experiences. I'll tell you the deepest ones I had were actually before I realized there was a God and I didn't really realize it at the time, but whatever. Uh, asserting that religious experiences are merely psychological is a claim. It's an assertion. Um, I demand proof for your assertion that spiritual experiences are purely psychological made up in the head. Why do you believe that and why should I believe it? Please provide evidence. Mm. This is an, a fine thing to ask an atheist. You are always looking for evidence. I'd like you to present yours. There's an ample reason to believe in spirit forces and that spirit uh, 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 experiences are real. I will provide some evidence but I don't need to provide all of the evidence because it's not on me to prove it. I know they're real. And so do most people. Most people have had spiritual experiences and believe in the spiritual. It's on you to prove to us why we should dismiss those because you assert that they're psychology. I don't think that's an unfair thing to ask, by the way. Yeah. Um, you can believe it and you could even be right, but you don't get to just say that that's all it was. Um, and what I'm also sensing here broadly is that um, he's, probably surrounded by adults who can't give him a very articulate answer. Yeah. It used to be that most educated Christians, that is the ones who went uh, through serious religious education, this why theology matters, could have told you, could have answered your questions. But if you've got a bad pastor or bad parents who were just lackadaisical, maybe you haven't heard the rational evidence. Tell you what, son, I'm here to tell you. Um, I'll, I'll school you from some of the brightest minds that have ever existed. I'll tell you why it's rational to believe in God there. So uh, it's on you, whether you want to hear it. Um, okay. Should we move <laughs> on or do you have more? I, I just thought of something. Actually, it, it, I don't know if you can find it on YouTube. If you ever, if you've ever seen the, uh, the sitcom, Kevin, Ke uh, Kevin can wait. Uh, he, there's actually, uh, he's actually brought into the little church group, and he's asked to explain why why they should believe in God, and he just kind of fumbles around, and then they kind of bring in the uh, the little superstar youth pastor who does a very articulate job right there on the sitcom. I don't know. Uh, I might like that if I can find it on YouTube. But yes, it's amazing how much Christian material has been scrubbed from YouTube over the years, and yes, we have ample evidence of scrubbing of Christian materials. Hmm. Um, and multiple people who've been driven offline by atheists. Ask mm -hmm. me about that one too, Heath, and I'll send you some materials. Some of your friends who are atheists do everything they can to silence people like us from criticizing them. All right, mm -hmm. well, let's keep going. But what really intrigued me was that those things don't necessarily indicate that religion is true. You could get people to follow just about any idea with those methods. But that alone didn't deconvert me. There was also deconvert. Uh, this bing, bing, bing. Go ahead, you, Rob. Oh no, I just want to say first off, religion is not a belief system. Religion, as a, as a whole, as a category, is not a belief system. You do not believe religion. You religion isn't religion. a way of knowing either. Let's just let's just dismiss those things right here and now. Not a way of knowing a anything. religion is, is a thing you believe, but yes, that, that that's an important distinction to make. You can have religious systems of thought, um, and some will be sucky religious systems of thought, and some will be very airtight and logical, and not necessarily at all draconian. I refer you to something called Thomist or Thomist Natural Law, mm -hmm. based on the writings of Saint Thomas Aquinas if you want to know how to construct an ethical system and you're curious and want to read a rational logical mind uh it's deep though um so yeah be careful with your use of the term religion what do you mean and are there atheist religions and by the way if your atheist friends assert that there can't be an atheist religion challenge them on that and get skeptical 
and remember the examples I just gave you. All right, should we move on? Sure. Another train of thought. I began to think about children in Africa or Asia or something along those lines who died never knowing anything about Christianity or Jesus. And I began to seriously wonder whether they could possibly go to heaven. Because I didn't buy into the idea that everybody's heard about Jesus, which I've heard some people say. But that kind of reminded me of a verse in the Bible, which now that I think about it was probably cherry picked, but it doesn't really matter anymore. The verse said something along the lines of God tries the hearts. And to me, that meant that if anybody died not knowing about Jesus, then they could still go to heaven if they had a godly heart, if they act. I'm going to stop them there. Um, there's, a, there, there, there's a few challenges here. Uh, I did notice the seems to me came out of you, something seems <laughs> to you from your own reading. Um, so again, I'm going to ask you to sit down and say, why does it seem that way to you and why are you the expert? And that should be asked anytime you read a Bible verse and you say, it seems to me it means this. Um, are you the expert? No, you are not. I'm, and yes, I'm here to tell you, you may not be smart enough to read the Bible correctly uh, because most people aren't in my experience. This is again where I get in trouble with evangelical Christians, but I hear a real, for a Catholic young man, I hear a strong evangelical tilt to the uh, Christian tilt to the whole thing because the evangelical Christians tend to be sola scripturists and sola fideists. So they believe, typically you believe the root gospel account, you believe Jesus is God, and then you get to go to heaven. So by the power of believing this intellectual proposition, you are saved. Um, uh, most Christians reject that thinking. And, and a lot of us resent evangelicals for spreading that. And they're going to come in and they're going to be responding to this video and they're going to be spamming us with Bible verses to tell us why they're wrong. But they're wrong. Um, uh, what, you, what, you're, what you're getting into in here is an area in theology called soteriology. And it's the question of what does salvation through Jesus Christ mean? And actually, you'll find out that learned thinkers going all the way back to uh, Origen and St. Augustine and many others have been wrestling with this question for 2,000 years. And there's different schools of thought on the matter. Yes. Um, and uh, in any case, most Christians, even the serious Protestants, uh, believe that salvation is more of a process, not an event. It's a, it's a lifelong effort to get closer to God. Um, what happens in the immediate afterlife varies from communion to communion. I'm pretty sure the Catholic way of looking at it is basically correct. Um, but in any case, again, you're a young man, not very well educated in the faith, making a lot of leaps by just reading the Bible for yourself. I think if nothing else, you've discovered that the Bible is not per perspicuous, does not explain itself, and is not obvious. I'll go back to saying, I, I, you know, I find if you don't even believe in God and miracles, it's actually a terrible book. Why would you be reading it? It's awful. Um, if you believe in God and miracles and spiritual forces, on the other hand, it comes alive and becomes incredibly beautiful the more you read it and the more you, you study it and the more you meditate upon it. Um, I get so much out of rosary meditations alone, I can't tell you. But again, that's me taking it seriously and taking the spiritual seriously. You don't know what you're talking about, and I'm not being mean. You literally should sit down. You don't know what you're talking about when you read the Bible. Put it away. <laughs> Go learn something from somebody. Um, you want to add anything, Rob? No. Nope. All right. Here we go. Acted in a godly way, and that made sense to me. But then I started thinking about what about the people that have heard about Jesus, have heard about Christianity, but don't believe it. If they, too, have a godly heart, could they not go to heaven also? But that still didn't deconvert me. But what really pushed me over the edge as to seriously doubt whether or not God existed was something that my teacher said in psychology class. We were learning about... Okay, most of that was not that objectionable. Just, we love that you deconverted again. He's going to go into a part that I think every Christian everywhere needs to see. Um, I'm probably going to be talking to people at my church about this and pointing this out to a lot of people. 
um, the, 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 the cult movement that you're a part of, Heath, and again, it is a cult movement, um, has a lot of tricks that it uses. And uh, people who are dogmatic religious atheists who believe all kinds of things that aren't true, um, but assert them because they're atheists, um, uh, you'll sometimes find them as teachers. Um, I have been uh, roundly criticized uh, for saying if I found out one of my kids had an atheist teacher, I would immediately pull my kid out of that classroom and out of the school if necessary. And I advise other parents to say, do the same. And I'm well, atheists uh, as a whole have, have announced their hostility to all form of religious belief. So uh, I, think, I think a little vigilance would be warranted. I do too, and, and he's here is about to, to illustrate to us why parents should find out if there are any atheists in their classrooms uh, teaching children. Here we go. Reinforcement schedules, and I'll try not to go too deep into what exactly this means, but basically the idea is that if a behavior is reinforced randomly, not necessarily with any correlation, then that could cause a perceived correlation and thereby cause superstitious behavior. He then started to say something, but stopped himself and said he wasn't going to say it. And a lot of people, including myself, were really curious as to what he was going to say. He said he was going to offend people, but everyone still wanted to know. He then asked us to raise our hands if we wanted to be offended. And I was one of the people who raised their hands, which now that I think about it, he was probably just looking for my hand. But once we convinced him to tell us what he was going to say, he said that prayer was a result of accidental reinforcement. Basically, that means that prayer is a superstitious behavior that doesn't actually have any efficacy. Yeah. I want to know who this teacher is because he needs to be fired. I'm yes. Heath. I'm probably going to try to find your teacher. I'm going to ask for people online to help me find where you go to school, find your teacher. He needs to be fired. Yes. Straight up. For asserting pseudoscience in the classroom, for psychological manipulation, and for proselytizing his atheist faith. Um, yes. That teacher just manipulated the shit out of you, young man, and he straight up lied to you about the science. Yes. He's a liar. And so one of the one of the things that I also often say, it's rhetoric, but it, it's rhetoric that means something that, that I'm well noted for, and I'm going to keep saying it. Atheists always lie. And I say that atheists always lie because atheists always lie. I want you to remember that phrase, Heath, even if it makes you mad, and even if it makes your friends mad, say it out loud a few times, and then start looking around you at the atheists. They do always lie. And that teacher just told you a whopper using Penn Jillette style carny verbal misdirection tricks to make, <laughs> you, think, to make you think that he was, uh, you know, that you were making him tell you a secret. Uh, no, son, he lied to you. There is ample evidence that what he told you is a lie. Yeah. No, notice he, he, he made it seem like this clandestine wisdom that might be too much for them and piqued their curiosity. Yep. Uh, that's very manipulative. An honest teacher would have said something very straightforward like this, which is what I would have said is that, so therefore, if we look at this data, well, have you ever wondered if prayer is like that? Hmm. Well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but let's look at the range of studies that look at this question. Yeah. And, and, and what is going to happen here, Heath, is that your atheist buddies are going to tell you, going to present you with a list of studies that they have produced. Um, um, they'll call it peer-reviewed science to tell you that they, uh, you know, that you can believe it because it's peer-reviewed science. Although if you look into it now, uh, you'll find that the peer review system is melted down and it is well known that fabricated papers and papers full of garbage are published all the time. And a lot of them can be sourced to so-called skeptic sites and so-called atheist sites. And just look, and if this website you're talking uses buzzwords like skeptic, rational, and science, um, look to see whether you should be skeptical if there's any real science there. There's reams of data on the efficacy of prayer and on how it's how people who go to church regularly are more healthy and live longer. Yeah. 
Um, and that at minimum, people who pray regularly tend to need less psychiatric care, less psychological care, um, uh, uh, tend to recover from injuries, uh, you know, traumatic, physical or otherwise, faster. Um, uh, there are peer reviewed studies uh, showing uh, some effect, some potential miraculous effect. There are numerous, uh, numerous credible, reliable reports of miracles occurring as a result of prayer. So what it gets down to here is your assertion, any assertion that that, that, that prayer is, uh, with, is not efficacious, they need to back that up. Yeah. And uh, if they present you with some meta study with a specific question, ask deeper. Yes. Yeah. Who've experienced miracles and know, by the way, I won't even tell you about it because it's none of your damn business. But those of us who have know they're real. Yes. It's no position whatsoever to tell us we are wrong. None. Yeah. We can only guess or assume that perhaps we are wrong. That's all you have. All right. Yeah. So. I, I think I think a lot of atheists uh, uh, they they I think what was referred to in the God delusion was a kind of meta study that actually found a negative correlation. But there have been studies since about the uh, efficacy of uh, intercessory prayer that <laughs> the results have not been the same as as that uh, as that study that cited in the God delusion. So no. But, uh, how, well, go ahead. I, I also want to say I mean you know how I feel about this. If a if a uh, Christian teacher had proselytized for Christianity in the same way that teacher had proselytized for atheism, the uh, Freedom from Religion Foundation would be uh, levying lawsuits against the school. There there would be uh, you know punishments uh, doled out. Uh, according according to law, according to the law of the land, atheism is a religion. At least as a legal fiction, it is enough of a religion. That that uh, prison uh, 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 atheism study groups are protected under the establishment clause or established under under the First Amendment. So okay. if atheism is enough of a religion that it's protected under the First Amendment, uh, it a a teacher who proselytizes atheism should be punished similarly as if they were uh, uh, advocating a religion like Christianity. They absolutely should. In fact, that man and, just indoctrinated you. Yes. And uh, that that uh, uh, assistant principal Ruff, I'm sure you may have seen that viral video of the of the assistant principal accosting the pro life students and telling them that they, they believe fairy tales. Yes, that that man he stepped down. I'm sure there were some. Uh, uh, I'm sure he was asked to step down. I'm sure it was not voluntary on his part. But uh, yes, uh, he needs to never be in any position of authority over children again. Let's see, let's let's test Heath and let's see how well he is controlled by his cult. Heath, I'm directly asking you now: make a video in which you condemn that horrible behavior by atheist authorities that Rob just mentioned. Um, we'll get you the link if you can't find it. Um, if you, as an atheist, will not condemn the way other atheists behave, I will note for you that uh, those of us uh, who see you as a group, which you are. Um, have every reason to suspect your motives, your character, your sense of honor, your sense of integrity, if you will not look at atheist misbehavior and do something about it or say something about it or condemn it. And if you say, yes, but the atheism didn't let, have them do that, no, that's a weasel. There are bad behaving atheists. School your own, son. You're not one of us anymore. You're one of them. Please school your own because the rest of us who aren't atheists are looking at you now and asking you what you're going to do about this sort of shit. And yeah. if there's nothing, you might want to think real hard later on about why atheists are so unpopular. Okay, um, shall we move on? Sure. Prayer doesn't work. And I am really interested in psychology, especially at the time. And that made total sense to me. And all of these things together, along with maybe some other things that I'm forgetting, that really made me wonder if God exists. So I decided to have an experiment of sorts. I figured that when God answers prayers, he answers it in a mysterious way. So I thought that I would pray for proof that God existed that was possible for him to do in these mysterious ways. I prayed... Okay, gotta stop him there. Do you want to go there? Me? 
All right, I'll go. Uh, I'll start. I'm very confused. I'm very confused. I, I, like, I like mysterious ways in scare quotes with the fingers. Um, uh, so the sarcasm is already kind of coming out of you. So again, I would note, I'm not angry at you for being sarcastic there, but you've already come to some pre some conclusions here. Um, and again, but he, you want, it, it seems like he really wants to appear like he arrived at this conclusion reluctantly. Yeah. And I'm not convinced that he did. I think he's got friends yeah. helping him out with this line of thinking and encouraging it. Um, mysterious ways. All right, Heath, you and your friends need to listen up real good. Um, again, this is Thomism, which means it comes right out of Catholicism. All right. Nothing moves itself. There must be an unmoved mover. Go read Thomas Aquinas's argument from motion. Make sure you understand it. By the way, when you study the argument from motion, uh, don't just run to your atheist friends so they can explain to you why it's wrong. Um, I want you to make sure you understand it on your own. And then after you can state the argument and you think you get it, see if you can knock it down. And then yes. see if they can knock it down and see if you're convinced they're right. We think there has to be a God, that it's a logical conclusion based on evidence and nothing else makes sense if there isn't one. There's one of your starting proofs. We have other proofs as well. And, and it, it's important to note that the argument from motion uh, trickles down from Aristotle, who lived yep. uh, 400 years before uh, Christianity was even a thing. So, yeah. so you can't just pawn it off all on the religion. No, you can't just pawn it all off on religion. And in fact, we got we got African tribes called the Bantu had the same basic principle and same basic idea, possibly as much as nine thousand years before Christ. So there, this is people have had an idea of God for a long time. And so, when you say mysterious ways, let me give it to you in the sophisticated theological way. God is the the entity that doesn't move, doesn't change, is uncreated eternal outside of time outside of space that causes all motion to happen both the seen and the unseen the physical that you see in physics and the unseen like you know math logic geometry ideas the mind and so on and uh, that's why god is we also need god for ethics and morals and other things like that that are unseen um and so let me put it to you shortly God is the thing that runs the laws of physics and the laws of probability. If God is running the laws of physics and probability, he doesn't have mysterious ways to make miracle occurs. They occur because he wants them to. The only thing, the only thing um, when we say God works in mysterious ways is we don't always understand why he's doing what he's doing. And we don't always know everything he's doing. Um, but we have a pretty good, I have a pretty good idea that it's pretty easy for the thing that controls the laws <laughs> everything, of yes. Probability, that, that controls the laws of, laws of physics and probability could just go snap, just like in a video game, and make whatever happened happen. By the way, speaking of video games, look up the digital universe theory in quantum physics, which is current respectable physics, and uh, it is entirely consistent with the idea that an intelligence is controlling probability in physics. Uh, this all people call God, said St. Thomas Aquinas, the Christian. Now you've just learned something that I can explain reasonably well to a 13-year-old. Were you able to grasp all that? And can you state it back to me? <clears throat> just curious. All right. <laughs> anyway, Rob? I'm, I'm, go ahead. I mean. All right. I'm on a roll. <laughs> and ask God to put a piece of paper on my bed just to show that he existed. Because I figured that this was real. God doesn't make pieces of paper appear on your bed. Good God, God, God is not your trained monkey. Yes. He's not a genie. He's yeah. the entity that's controlling reality. Let's go on. Really simple. This was possible to happen without divine intervention. So this could easily fall into this mysterious way that God answers prayers. And then later that day, there was no paper on my bed. And I did similar things a couple times just to make sure, and with the same result. So I thought one of two things could explain this. Either God doesn't exist, and I'm wasting my time learning about him, or he does exist, and he's allowing me to disbelieve. But at that moment, I didn't turn into a full-blown atheist. 
I identified as an agnostic, which really just means that I didn't I'm gonna know let what him the roll out. atheist meant at the time, but I still wanted to know for sure. So I did what anyone would do, and I looked it up on the internet. I <laughs> looked up proof that... Hey, I'm gonna stop there and just mention atheists uh, who run cult, uh, the atheist cult network, uh, some of them are right-wing, some of them are uh, libertarian, uh, a lot of them are socialist or so-called progressive, whatever. They've got they blanketed the internet with atheist sites. So if you just go and Google certain phrases, um, sites run by atheists will will come up first. Yeah. So the question you should ask is should you really trust the internet? And my answer to you is no. Seek scholarly learned sources. Um, and also, even if you do get a convincing, um, see, so you go to an atheist website. By the way, look for the buzzword skeptic science. Uh, rationalism, uh, and of course, atheism. literally, if you're on a site that has atheism in the name, you might want to stop and be skeptical of what they're saying, especially, but look for all those buzzwords. And then go ahead and go find a religious site and go find a serious one, not a fundamentalist Christian site that just cites the Bible to you. Find a learned scholarly Christian sources. There's a lot of them. Uh, and if you want some good references to start, go start looking at people like Professor John Lennox. I'm not real fond of, uh, uh, go look at Bishop Robert Barron, et cetera. Anyway, mm -hmm. let's just let this kind of train wreck of uh, disaster cult propaganda coming out of a poor brainwashed young man's uh, uh, mouth. Let's just let him finish. God existed. And what I found was really underwhelming. I understood very well where they were coming from. After all, these were all things that I had heard throughout my life, but didn't really think much about. But I didn't necessarily understand how they connected to the existence of God. Basically, I was just really confused, which I now understand that that's pretty much how proof of God works. It's just really confusing. So since the... Whoa! Okay, I, I think we need to stop there. Well, so he's basically he's saying if, if, he, if he can't understand it, no one can understand it. Right. There you go. And in fact, I'm, I'm going to just kind of stop here. Um, we, we've gone on long enough. And, and, and sadly, Heath, you're unconvincing. Um, and you should stop and, and start realizing how unconvincing you really are to anybody who's got an ounce of skepticism about you and the people you're with can see. Um, uh, you are in a cult. That's what you have joined. And they have talking points and, and identifiable uh, scripts. Um, they, uh, somehow Sam Harris is probably in the background, Penn Jillette, Bill Maher, those people, or some of the more recent slimy people like the guys over at Secular Talk. Um, or, oh, good. Or, uh, secular Talk really shows how atheism is now scraping the bottom, the bottom of the barrel. I mean, I mean Kyle, uh, Kyle Kalinske is just a devil. I'll put this in the air. Professor Stephanie Thomason has has dared me to call in live to Mount Matt Dillahunty. Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't I don't know how well that will go because I, I may just try it. Um, yeah. But he, he should know in advance. Yeah, no, no, I'm you know, I won't attack him or anything, but <laughs> he won't enjoy the experience. Um because it'll be like this. It'll just be just be pointing out what hideously full of shit transparently dumb human beings most of these atheists are he please don't turn into one they're awful by the way i'm even going to be ruder notice how most of the most of the atheist women are sluts um and pill poppers and alcoholics because well all of them are most of them are all you have to do is hang out with them long enough i know i was one for 30 years yes by the way Heath, i'm an ex-atheist i've read all the material i've read all their best thinkers um i was one for years i even you know, uh, would often make the same arguments as you. The last telling point, by the way, is toward the end of this. I'm not even going to play it because it's it's in there. And everybody can go see it on Heath's channel if you want. He said he has come to understand now. He's been reading, watching atheist videos, and they're very interesting to him. So he's encouraging people to join the cult with him. Um, and he says he has learned now that atheism isn't a disbelief in God. Atheism is just lack of belief in God. Rob, why don't you just school him on that? Do you get any comments on that lack of belief shit? Well, I, I mean, I mean, unless, uh, unless, if, if you're claiming in any way 
that uh, that people who believe in God are erroneous in their beliefs, whether their belief is either incorrect or invalid, you are making a claim and, and as such has, has a burden of proof. So you can't just, no, I don't have to prove anything because I'm not making a claim. If you are claiming that we as Christians, as religious believers, as theists, are in any way erroneous in our thinking, then yes, you have a burden of proof. You actually do. You're asserting that we're wrong. Please say so. A lot of these atheist cultists will say, you have the burden of proof. No, we don't. We have reached a logical conclusion based on evidence. You are free to agree or disagree, but you don't get to be the arbiter of reality. You are not the arbiter of truth and neither are your atheist buddies, who you should notice by now make a lot of assertions they can't back up. Yes, because, because atheists don't just lack a belief. They say the Bible is Bronze Age fairy tales. They say God is, is an invisible man in the sky. Go listen to the song again. <laughs> song in, in a very qualified sense. Yes. <laughs> Where the sun went at night. <laughs> But yes, those are all claims. So it, it, it's 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 very uh, it, it's it's very dishonest to say I merely lack a belief. If that was if that was the sum total of atheism, I would say I agree. You do lack a belief. So there's there's no room, there's no disagreement. There's no room for debate. I mean, I, I agree one hundred percent. You do lack a belief, but you're actually you're actually making a claim about the validity of religious belief. That's right. That's right. And you do have a burden of proof for your own claims if you're making claims and you're, you're, you want us to back up. Now, I, I want to say, because, because, because this is going to uh, uh, get some butt hurt. If, if a theist says God exists, if I say uh, uh, the Christian religion is true, I have a burden of proof. If you say God doesn't exist, you have a burden. If you say God probably doesn't exist, you have a burden of proof. If you say there is no evidence for God, you That's have a burden of proof. Yeah, in fact, that's a lie straight up. You say, no, there's no evidence for God. That is a lie every time yes. it comes out of your mouth. And I, I want you to be confronted with that, too. If you have ever said there's no evidence for God, you lied. And whoever said it near you lied. There's evidence. Yes. The question is whether it's evidence you accept or reject, which is ultimately on you. Um, by the way, we're not evangelical Christians, and we're not going to tell you that you're going to go to hell for being an atheist. Yeah. Um, not that simple. Plus, uh, uh, yeah, go, I was going to say before the uh, it's actually a problem, and the problem of unbelief, and it's not a trivial problem. It's not something where we're just going to sweep under the carpet. No, in fact, you can come to believe that there's a God, and you can still think uh, the Bible's a, a pile of crap, and then just go ahead and set it on fire because if you think it's a pile of crap, you're not going to get anything out of reading it anyway. Um, you know, uh, once you understand that the spiritual is real. On the other hand, it's a really new ball game. And once you understand that there's 2,000 years of scholarly tradition to draw on, on how to understand it in context and with layers and depths, yeah, it, just sitting and reading it, I don't, I, I still, I'm a very serious Christian and I don't get much out of just sitting and reading the Bible. I do read it regularly, don't get me wrong, but uh, it's, it's, it's meditating on what I've read and what it means and knowing the history, knowing the context. Yeah knowing the theology and what it implies. Um, it's a very prayerful, deep thing. That's at least as advanced intellectually as any form of meditation you've ever heard of. Okay, so you have at best a child's understanding. And we yes. not real interest. the rest of us, the adults who've really thought this through, even the kids really, aren't bound by your reading or of the Bible or how it seems to you. Yes, yes. There's more to talk about here. Um, and and that's, that's what I think is, is the real shame is that I think in everyone's uh, adolescence, in everyone's teenage years, there, there are kind of cracks in, uh, that appear in what we believe. But now, you, now like, you, like you said, it just goes on the internet. There is all this extremely facile, extremely uh, superficial atheist argumentation that just comes to, uh, to seal up those, you know, to, to just completely uh, monopolize whatever their thought process is. Right. They, they don't even get a chance to meditate on the problems before they're they're basically crammed with all this atheist propaganda. Exactly. And so they, they're, they're, they're 16 year old atheists, and they think because they've seen a few uh, uh, meme graphics, they, they have a complete command of all the issues, which is not only a problem of religious belief, it's not only a spiritual problem, it's also an intellectual problem. No, it really I mean, These are concerns of the entire history of Western civilization. If you seriously think, 
you can sweep them aside uh, due to something you read in, in a meme graphic. Uh, uh, the entire hit, you know, the entire book of Western civilization is basically closed to you. All right. We do need to close this up. We've gone about our hour. We've probably gone a little long. I want to make a few closing remarks. Um, Heath, I'm going to point one more thing out to you. Substantial scientific research shows that it is normal for children to develop a sense of the spiritual and a, about something that could roughly be called God between the ages of three and four. This happens to most children. Um, it's a very rough, unformed idea of God, but it is almost universally understood as something intelligence making it all go. And the kid gets a strong feeling of that. Not every child has it. A lot of autistics don't um, and people with other issues, but it, it, it's, it's pretty common. It's mo in most humans. They develop it in childhood and they get curious. And so they want to learn more about it. And then how good the education is from there kind of matters. Now, what your atheist buddies are going to dogmatically assert without proof um, and no science to back them up is, is that this, that this natural development of spiritual feeling in most, not all children, um, is a delusion and is imaginary. And they will even suggest that the best thing is to teach the child to ignore that as an illusion and as just like Santa Claus, which is kind of sad because when, when, when researchers have talked to children that age, they can easily distinguish Santa Claus and a monster under the bed from God. As early as age three or four, usually by age six or seven, they get it just fine. Some kids seem to be born where they don't get it, and maybe they get even a little psychologically traumatized because everybody else gets it and they don't. Um, and so even though your atheism may be right, here's the thing I'm going to say. What if those kids naturally evolved that sense because we need a sense of the spiritual and God wants us to know us, know them? Okay, what if we evolved that as a trait? And what would your, and more to the point, what would you be your justification for asserting that you should teach the child that the child is wrong? Especially, I go back to the arguments for God I just gave you, which include thousands of year old, idea, uh, you know, ideas and stuff in contemporary physics. Yes. And tell me, what would be the justification for telling that four year old child that their natural feeling was wrong? what would be wrong with telling an adult that? And what would be your evidence for that? I used to be an atheist and I decided atheism was full of shit. I did not become a Bible thumper. I did not become a Jesus freak. And I almost never quote Bible verses at anybody. And I'm here to tell you, you don't have to come to Jesus. Get out of the atheist shit. Deprogram yourself from that indoctrination. Mm -hmm and uh, uh, free your mind and start learning some shit because the atheists are lying to you. Yeah. Um, okay, please, everybody, we do need your help on Patreon. Bills are tough to pay. We do have a big crowd of volunteers now, but I'm going to start getting more aggressive about mentioning. We have a tip jar on escapingatheism.com. We do have a Patreon. We really could use the help. I know times are tough, but this is valuable information that's not getting out there, frankly, because what's known as the skeptic mafia often shuts down videos and channels like this one. Yes. We need your yes. help and your support. And by the way, watch for efforts to censor us while we're laughing about it. Um, uh, multiple people who've been critical of atheism on Twitter are reporting more and more harassment from atheists and more and more false accusations. Oh, and by the way, people like Professor Thomason are being uh, stalked at work by ideological atheists who don't like her being a Christian on the internet and criticizing atheism. Hey, feminists, are you mad that atheists are harassing Christian women? Are you good with that? We'd like to know that too. All right, give us a like, give us a subscribe. Please also for Deflating Atheism, he's on Patreon. Subscribe to him on YouTube. Have a good one and God bless. Have a good night.